I barely made it. <laughs> Be on the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. Ah, yes, the yellow brick road. Yes, go down that little trail where all that gold and lovely stuff is at. Yeah, all that shit that you really don't need. That's pretty much, yeah. Don't need it. Don't want it. Whatever. Hey. Oh, well. Y'all are listening to Grammy Mary and Grammy's Rocket Chair here on World Truth Radio and RealLibertyMedia.com Channel 3. Also on the WorldTruth.org Spreaker Channel. And after next week, I'm going to have to learn to say something a little bit different. But hey, it's okay. It happens. In any case, let me see who is over here on World Truth. I still have a few people over here on World Truth. I have the lovely Mary B and Grimner and Marcos and T.D. Sanders over here. At least those are the ones that liked what I, my little note saying, hey there, hi there, ho there, I'm going to be on the radio tonight because I'm just messed up. I can't get my day straight. Although, I did know this morning when I got up because I I turned on my computer and I pulled up the weather and it said happy St. Patty's Day and I went oh yeah I gotta wear green now that was when I first got up that was pre-coffee pre-shower pre all of that fun stuff except for letting the dogs out and go to the bathroom and yeah by the time I got done showered and critters tended to and all that fun stuff I forgot <laughs> But, <clears throat> luckily, the sweater that I put on, because yes, today it was rather chilly. It was 78 degrees on Monday, and today, burr! And tomorrow's going to be even more burr, because we are we have a 100% chance of snow tomorrow. yippee i yay cow patty. Thank you, Mary B. Mary B liked my song choice to start things off. Um, and thank you, Grammy, for for sharing that. Oh, I need to go look at Twitter. Um, <laughs> oi, oi. It's been a day. Let me tell you. Let me see here. I see Barman has been a busy, busy bee. Thank you, sweetheart, for tweeting me. I will retweet. Tweetly deedly deed. Retweet. Um, thanks, sweetie. Good Lord, I don't know what the hell it is with me and the capital H. <laughs> Get the H out of there, damn it. Okay, um, get that retweeted so that my, um, I still have over 300, I think. Let me look. Yeah, I have 303 stalkers. <laughs> I love it. Um got the pop-up oh yes I am the good witch follow the yellow brick road follow the yellow brick road yeah and I even have well they're not ruby red slippers and they're boots but they're red <laughs> I do have some why I bought red boots I just had a wild hair one day and went I like those those are pretty I'll wear them I've well I bought them thank god they were on sale <laughs> but oh well um yeah I bought them, and I've worn them, I think, a sum total of maybe three times. Yeah, but I do wear them on occasion. Uh, I'm getting a low-frequency hum, too, honey, and I don't know what the heck is causing it. I have tried to adjust things and all that other fun shit, and I don't know what the hell's going on. Um, using the tube, I could be. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I've I've had a I've had a hum since I plugged in my headphones. So I don't Nope. 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 It went away and now it's back. Let's see. Yeah. Shit. Okay, well, I'll deal with it. I hope you don't mind too horrible bad. Hell it may have been that one of my critters chewed on my because it got really, really low for a while there, and then, well, it went, it came back. Okay, over here in the RLM, yeah, I prattle. 
in the RLM. I see Asmo right up top. Hey there, hi there, ho there, Asmo. Why are you always, I always ask that and you never answer. See how you are. I also see Barman is here. Thank you, sweetheart. You're so wonderful at tweeting and retweeting and all that fun shit. And looky there, there is a lovely Beth Z loitering around over here. I hope you're keeping those guys in line. Hi, Bobby. I also see Cowboy Tech. Are you hearing pleasant voices, darling? I hope so. And there is Mr. Grimner who uh, fixed my metadata. Thank you ever so much, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um, Grimmy, I'm a hum I think, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I didn't have it yes or the last time, but yeah, this time I got a hum. It's hum along. I have a hum along. Um, oh, it goes with your meditations? Hum. I, I, um. You know, that was one of those things. Okay, get back to saying hi to everybody, and then you can do that. Jesus. Palomino. Okay, I also see the lovely Moose Girl is here. Hey there, woman. How are things in your world? And looky there, the lovely Kate as well. And then there's Romes, who won't let me breathe heavy, but that's okay. I had a massive sneezing fit earlier today. I walked into one of our other locations and I, I wasn't in there two minutes and I started sneezing and cripes, it was like 10 minutes later before I finally quit. And that was after I got out into my car, drove back to my location and sat there for a while and it, I eventually just kind of stared at the fluorescent lighting. Because if you've ever noticed, if you have a sneeze that's just right there and you can't make it go away look at a really bright light that'll make it either go away or it'll kablooey all over the place <laughs> i don't know why but it works that way um it's it's science i also see ib don see work is here although it looks like he's away but he's at least logged in and java 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 doctor two who is expecting mr stork soon yay I can't wait. Baby pictures. Now, see, if I lived anywhere close to you, that baby would never have to lay in its bassinet because, well, I am a baby hog. Trust me on this. I have been told that so many times that I went, yeah, I resemble that. What's your problem? Okay, I also see Chalcedony is here as well as Gary L., who's, um, and looky there, I'm here. Okay, I'm, um. Ah, <laughs> uh, could be hay fever season. Could be shh. They just made popcorn. Maybe that's what it was. Um, I also see Juana Taco is here. I had a bowl of soup, hun. It was yummy. I put crackers in it this time instead of toasting some bread, but it was yummy. I also see Oslo is here, and to round out the crew, I see RLM95379. Hey there, hi there, ho there, Mr. RLM numbers. Double nine. I'll just do double nine because you got nines on either end. You got a good liar's poker hand, or at least a good start of a liar's poker hand. In any case, uh, what I was going to say about the um thing is there is a way that you can exercise your brain. You take, you put your left foot in, you put your left foot, in. no, <laughs> you don't do any of that shit. Okay, you can if you want to, but you might fall down if you're coordinated like me. Um, okay, you take your right hand and you reach across and you grab your the lower earlobe of your left ear. And then you take your left hand and you reach across and you grab the lower earlobe of your... Um, right ear and then you do squats and as you are squatting down hello RLM 35033 um, as you are squatting down you inhale and as you stand back up you exhale and try not to pass out now you're supposed to do that for three minutes and you're supposed to do that every day. And they're actually using this exercise with children that have autism problems, uh, people, kids that have ADHD. Okay, bye RLM 35033. Hello and goodbye. Um, you know, people with any kind of concentration issues, people with Alzheimer's, you know, or it, the 
early onset of Alzheimer's, however they want to put that shit, which basically means you need to get more cholesterol in your diet, sweetheart. Because uh, your body needs fat. To stay away from anything that says fat-free also means flavor-free and bad for you. So stay away from all of that crap. Um, but, okay, where was I? Oh, yeah, I need to be doing my alms. <laughs> I really do. Because <laughs> I've gotten so spazzy lately. <sighs> but you're supposed to do that exercise. Set. Hut, hut. Hey, there you go, Gariel. Yeah, okay, that would work. <laughs> I also have some little cards that tell you different facial expressions you're supposed to make to kind of cleanse your body, release the evil spirits, all that fun shit, and, and noises that you're supposed to make while you're making those facial expressions, which I'm going to have to dig those cards out and take them down when I go to see my kids, which reminds me I have to get a game out tonight yet too, because my daughter's bachelorette party is this weekend, and I'm supposed to bring the game of things. This should be interesting. If you have ever played the game of things, <laughs> wow, it could, uh, maybe it's just my family. It could be, because we're weird, but oh well. Um, <clears throat> and now RLM 95379 has left. Well, hi there, ho there, bye, sorry, hasta la taco muchachos. I speak Spanish very poorly, but I do speak English just a skosh better. Oh, hi, Catherine. How are you doing, sweetheart? Catherine is from Ireland. She's got a wee bit of the lucky charms. You know, I just got to thinking of that earlier today. I, my mind. Yeah, the cobwebs, the breeze blows through, which it's been really breezy out here. But the... Um, oh. <laughs> thank you, Java. <laughs> thank you, Yurka. They so sweet. Yeah, how can you tell I'm smiling? <laughs> okay. Um, in any case, where was I? <laughs> oh, I know. I was thinking about Ireland and it being uh, St. Paddy's Day and, and all of this Irish stuff. And I totally suck at the Irish brogue, but I like to do it anyway. And... Um, <laughs> I got to thinking about Lucky Charms cereal, and I thought, you know, it really is kind of pervy. I mean, think about it, you know, because everybody calls it their family jewels, and those are his Lucky Charms. Ew, yeah, you will never, ever look at a box of Lucky Charms the same way again, will you? I know you won't. <laughs> I'm kind of evil like that. Uh, hi, Larry. How are you this evening, sweetheart? Okay, let me see what I can find. I found some fun things. Um, actually, there was one who, oh, Marcos posted this on my wall earlier. I think it was Marcos that posted it on my wall. Maybe not. No, yeah, it was. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's just a silly because it's the lucky charms that are magically delicious. Oh, man, that's just really freaking wrong after what I just said. Wow. Okay, this is from the dailypresser.com. And it's just a little funny, but I found it extremely amusing. Um, she left the house in a see-through top. And you never could have guessed what her grandma would do. So, that's the little headline to it. So, here we go. An 18-year-old daughter comes downstairs ready for her date. She's wearing a see-through top and no bra. Her grandmother has a fit telling her she doesn't dare go out like that. And the teenager tells her, Loosen up, Grams. These are modern times. You gotta let your rosebuds show. I've never heard them called rosebuds. Have I led a very sheltered life? I just always thought they were sweater puppies. And you're nipping out. <laughs> oh, well. She does go out, nips and all. The next day, the girl comes downstairs, and her grandmother is sitting in the living room, topless. Now, the girl, she just wants to die, and she explains to her grandma that she has friends coming over soon, and that it's just not appropriate, to which grandma responds, and this would be me, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> 
Loosen up, sweetie. If you can show off your rosebuds, then I can let my hanging baskets out. <laughs> I absolutely love that. I just think that's too freaking funny. Oh. Uh... <laughs> and did you know, ladies, that it's actually better for the girls if you let them roam and be free? Um, do what, Gary L? Um, yes. Um, okay. Don't worry, Grams. We n now live in a touchy-feely society, justified genderless society, who don't mind those ideas. You know, there's an awful lot of people that don't mind and actually when you stop and think about a lot of the different cultures around the world there are an awful lot of cultures where women don't wear bras it's just here where you have to have that push-up bra and you have to have the water bra and you have to have the underwire bra and you got to have the this bra and the that bra you know and and the the faker rooney so that when you finally get with someone and you start getting intimate and you take that thing off and all you've got is a couple of uninflated balloons after them thinking you have Kilimanjaro. Yeah, that's called false advertising with the falsies. So, ladies, instead of wearing all of that crap and making someone else buku bucks while also possibly endangering yourself because there have been studies doesn't mean that it's true because I read something about which I will get to that later as well um, you know where studies have found that that there is a link between wearing underwire bras and breast cancer so ladies if you wish to keep the girls healthy let them roam free because you will actually work your muscles and that will keep them firmer then, you know, because the other stuff, they get lazy. Um, okay, what's that, cowboy? Let me share. Let me share the, the ta-ta thing. I got to see what cowboy posted over here in RLM. Um. Oh, yes, people still think a new president will fix things. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I think the only POTUS any of us need is ourselves. Be your own POTUS. And deal with the repercussions of every decision that you make, POTUS. There ain't nothing wrong with being your own boss, applesauce. So long as you are adult enough to deal with the repercussions of your actions and your words. Um, okay. I know my friend Pedro over here on uh, Facebook will enjoy this. <laughs> because he's the one that posted the thing about the going braless girls. Because, well, you know, Pedro, Pedro is all about uh, community awareness and your health. You know, he's just thinking of your health. You, you know, ladies, our eyes are going to have to migrate down to our chest because that's the only way we'll get the guys to look us in the eyes again. <laughs> that's just the way it works. Okay. Got that chaired. Let me see. What do I have going on over here on Ficky Book? A great escape sale? My little sister posted a great escape sale, which she's... Oh, cool. Look at all of that. All kinds of stuff on sale. But it's on sale. Oh, these are patterns. I better like that because I want to go back and look. I'm a, I'm a knitter freak. Or freak knitting or whatever. I like to crochet too, but I much prefer knitting. Because that way if I have someone mess with me, I have an implement to defend myself with. <laughs> Yeah, did you hear about the old lady that uh, <clears throat> got escorted off of the airplane? She was just sitting there knitting an afghan. But um bum bum Okay. Um, let's see, who was it that shared this? Oh, a friend of mine over on Facebook shared this. And I saw some links about it earlier today. 
hailstorms kill animals at the Fort Worth Zoo, which my cousin had shared a link or some pictures and some video of the hail that was, all hail was breaking loose down there in her neck of the woods. And I thought, holy smokes, which, you know, this is the time of year when that weird stuff comes in. You know, they say, oh, it's just going to be a little rain. And next thing you know, half the town is blown away. It was such a small storm. Apparently, though, the uh, Fort Worth Zoo delayed their opening until noon on Thursday after hailstorms killed several animals. A spokesperson, um, Al Alexis Wilson, said that veterinarians were treating a few animals at the hospital, but that several fowl were killed by falling hailstones. Five flamingos, a pelican, and a couple other small birds because you have them in these enclosures and they cannot get away. They cannot fly away and be free. So it was a rather difficult morning to come in and discover those things, she said. But we also have a park that was covered, um, that was covered in with ice, covered in with ice. Wow, who, who wrote that? Someone needs to edit, proofread, please. Wilson also said that injuries to the surviving animals are not considered serious. We did have a few birds injured, but they are over in the hospital. It's a birdie hospital, don't you know? It's gone to the birds. Uh, we do have, um, oh, they do have an animal hospital on the premises, and which I would think, well, duh, it's a zoo. And some of them were just a little stunned. Probably had gotten hit by hailstones. Yeah, think. It does look like, it almost looks like it's snowed. It's so pretty and white. I've been, yeah, I've had that kind of hail in my neck of the woods. And yeah, when all hail breaks loose, it really just, it's like, I could do without the hard water falling from the sky, God. I really could. Um, looks like the uh, damage at the zoo could be seen on the ground and from the air. Uh, apparently, numerous skylights from the zoo were damaged in addition to roofs and buildings, which, yeah, that's an awful lot of hail. Awful lot of hail. Um, I, re I remember a few years back, we had a nasty storm come through. And uh, better than a drone striking an Afghan? Well, there you go, Gary L. Uh, we had a nasty storm come through about, oh, it was about 80 miles south of me. And um, by the time the, the hailstones reached their largest size, they were the size of softballs. They were coming through people's roofs and through the walls of their houses. Now, you know, when you got that kind of hailstones, yeah, there ain't no hiding from that stuff. We, we get some really freaky stuff out here, but, you know, this is Kansas, and Kansas gets some really weird weather. So maybe because that's why we're so weird out here. Because it's like, what the hell? Maybe that's why we say it like that. What the hell? I don't know. Okay. Poor babies. Okay, let me move along, see what else I've got. Hello there, everybody over on Informed Planet. I didn't post anything over on Informed Planet because these, these people are serial. As in, like, uh, well, not quite post toasty serial, but they're serial. They're a serial bunch. And uh, I have tried to share some fun things over there, and I've had people grumble bumble at me for sharing fun things. And it's like, wow, butt pucker much? Sometimes, just sometimes, you need to learn to relax and realize that there are other things in the world. I can do, I can do my Glenda the Good Witch. There are other things in the world that are lovely to look at. There are beautiful things that you must also see. Look around the ugly. It's not all ugly. There's lots of lovely things out there. <sighs> I actually read a story like that to Circles and Flash last week, and I about wet myself laughing. <laughs> I may have to see if I can find a story I can do that with one of these days. Not tonight, because I have a kitty cat on my lap, 
And I really don't want to scare her because it's just claws. Okay, um, I'm going to dig in my pocket some more. S'mores. Yes. I don't think they're serial killers, Grim. Although, you know, they could be. Um, that poor cereal, it didn't stand a chance. Once the milk hit it, it knew it was a goner. <laughs> oh, that's just really sad. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, I don't want that one because that's already been defeated um, okay somebody shared this over in the RLM the other day you know I have been so busy at work I haven't even had time to to peek at things and try and stuff my pocket full <laughs> it really sucks I hate having to work at work damn it all in any case, this is from the dailycaller.com and uh, it's in their education section. Satan loving students on Meaner Soul Duh, College campus uh, combat conservatism, transphobia, and NAFTA. That's an odd combination, wouldn't you say? I'm thinking Satan loving. I, did, I didn't know that Satan was into loving. I thought Satan was into destruction and hating. There I go, having an independent thought. Oh well, apparently gay capitalism hating devil worshippers at the University of Meaner Sold uh, of Morris have announced their intention to wage a war against conservatives on campus. The nascent group called Queer Devil Worshippers for a Better Future. Now you're you're if you go by the actual queer as in unusual, odd, strange, I could see how that applies to you. They announced um, their existence and our, its ambitions late last month in a campus-wide email. I'm looking to start a Satanist group at Morris to address the budding conservatism on this campus, which I find abhorrent. Well... Good for you, Reed Larson. I'm hoping the group will have a social justice platform and further such a platform through good old devilish revelry. Hmm. Well. Larson has uh, christened himself as Vold Mother. Christened himself as Vold Mother. Okay. And he's the Vold Mother of the Queer Devil Worshippers for a Better Future. Uh, define what better future is coming from a devil worshiper. That, that's my first question here. Aside from the fact that you're being just odd and unusual and really quite strange. For the group's logo, Largan, uh, Larson has chosen a classic circle emblazed satanic pentagram festooned with rainbow colors of the gay pride flag. Well, if that ain't enough to get all of them Bible thumpers just a thumping. I think it would. I would love to see this bunch and the Westboro Baptist Church go head to head. I would sell tickets. Who wants to buy a ticket to go watch it? Bring your own lawn chair and your own cooler. I will not supply beverages or seating arrangements, but I will supply popcorn. <laughs> the budding conservatism, budding, hmm, all kinds of mental images come to mind on the University of Minnesota campus has uh, it consists of a handful of groups a gun group a pro-life group which boasts perhaps two dozen members combined and a source who uh, chose to remain unidentified cold they told this to the campus reform well so you've got two groups with maybe a dozen members and that that makes the queer devil worshippers want to come out of the closet. Well, all righty. Larson has distributed the initial newsletter of queer, queer devil worshippers, or QDW. Hmm. QDWBF. Oh, they're BFs. Isn't that sweet? 
he distributed this on the 1,900 student campus in the small town of Morris, Minnesota. Among the articles in the newsletter is a piece entitled Six Reasons Why Necromancy is Better Than Bigotry. You know, I could almost agree with that, although I think they're both equally vile. How can one be less vile than the other? Inquiring minds time. <clears throat> Apparently, necromancy means talking to the spirits of dead people. Oh, really? Well, uh, that's not necessarily what I thought it meant, but hey. No, I was thinking necrophiliac. That's what I was thinking. Okay, necromancy. Well, you know, I much I talk to dead people all the time. Some of them are still walking around and talking and actually doing things, but they don't realize they're brain dead. I know quite a few of them. Huh. <sighs> I have my moments myself, but then it gets resuscitated by someone having a brain fart, and I go, <laughs> yes, I feel better. Uh, apparently, one of the reasons the uh, QDWBF gives is that necromancy is more environmentally sound. Well, okay, I could get along with, yeah, because, you know, you're talking to energy, so, yeah, talking to energy as opposed to uh, putting out negative energy, well, hmm, hmm. I think we can agree that Flint's water crisis was caused by rich white government officials throwing poor black folks under the bus. Uh, no, I think we can say that's caused by egomaniacal, control freak, power hungry asshats doesn't make a damn bit of difference what color their skin is because it comes in multiple colors those lovely little traits and it's caused by people who have absolutely zero conscience and have absolutely zero care as to the repercussions on anyone else all they care about is their rewards well as ye sow so shall ye reap Apparently, these queer devil worshippers uh, also blame conservatives for the North America Free Trade Agreement. <laughs> it comforts you to think that way. In 1993, law that was uh, signed. Okay, a 1993 law signed Democratic Bill Clinton, and supported by 166 Republicans and 129 Democrats in Congress. In other words. It doesn't make a shit and bit of difference if you got an R or a D by your name. You're all in there playing the game. And you're all doing it at the expense of the rest of us. Because, yeah, you guys play. You guys put squiggly lines on pieces of paper and the rest of us get to deal with your BS. Or if we just collectively went, no, I don't believe that has any power whatsoever. Maybe, just maybe, that stuff would stop, you think? Maybe. You cannot push your pain onto other people. Yes, you can, sweetheart. Blaming immigrants for economic trends that were started by NAFTA. Well, you know, somebody's got to be blamed. Damn it. And pay no attention to those other three fingers pointing right back at the ones that are pointing the finger of blame and shame. Speaking of which, blame and shame, it's now clear how many members besides Larson belong to the queer devil worshippers group. However, new members must recite the infernal oath, swear to resist capitalism, and oppose all forms of oppression, including but not limited to homophobia, transphobia, sexism, racism, albeit ab ab ableism. What the hell's oh, ableism? Ah, uh, that's, that's a microaggressor crowd, isn't it? Capitalism and all that spawns from such treacherous lechery. This is according to the campus reform. Well, you know, I'm against homophobia and transphobia and sexism and racism and ableism. And I'm really not crazy about capitalism either because, well, it's gone to the dark side. No matter how well-intended some people may think it is, or how wonderful it is, it's gone to the dark side. Yes, it has. Darth, are you listening? Uh, queer Devil Worshippers is slated to meet weekly in a taxpayer-funded space on campus. And why not? Because 
the uh, Constitution doesn't say anything about um, keeping any kind of religious. If you're going, to, if you're going to allow one type of religion to practice or have meetings or what have you on public property, then you have to open those doors to all of them, including atheism, which is a religious belief. It is believed in with a religious fervor. Sorry, David, but it's true. Just like scientism is believed in with a religious fervor. Even though a lot of scientists, including Albert Einstein, believed in miracles and believed that there was a was slash is a higher power out there that started it all. Because, you know, every scientist in the whole wide world will tell you, well, maybe not every one of them, but almost all of them will tell you it started with a big bang, we think. So give them that one miracle and they can explain the rest of it away with science. But you got to have that one miracle. First there was nothing, then all of a sudden, kablooey! Apparently encounters with people supporting Satan and his minions are not frequent on America's campus, college campuses, but they do happen. Yeah. In 2014, the Harvard Extension School Cultural Studies Club relocated a satanic black mass ritual originally scheduled for Monday night on campus at Cambridge Queen's Head Pub in the basement of the Memorial Hall, which is a public, um, public honoring the sacrifices made by Harvard men during the Civil War. Ra ra re, kick him in the knee. Ra ra ras, kick him in the other knee. The last minute it moved and it was a crushing blow to efforts at campus diversity. It came in response to a public outcry and considerable negative publicity. Which, you know what? That too is part of freedom of speech. So, that is the ugly underbelly. You know, you can go out there and speak your mind all you want to, just like I can go out there and speak my mind all I want to. But I have to deal with the repercussions of everything that falls out of my mouth. Everything. Just like everyone else does. They may not think they have to, but they do. Eventually. So, I'm going to put this over on World Truth is Real real quickly. I think any kind of worship of an outside entity is absolutely insane but that's just me I think I think we all have whatever we need inside so you know if you want to and and that's another I got into a discussion with someone a few weeks back you know they were telling me about Satan and he's real and all this other fun stuff and I said I don't know one way or the other but I would if you know, if I was Satan, I might be a little bit miffed that I'm getting blamed for everybody else's weaknesses, for everybody else's bad acts. How do you know that this guy, you know, wasn't just walking along, minding his own business, and then all of a sudden someone goes, you're the devil, and I'm going to blame you for everything I do wrong. The devil made me do it. <sighs> I'm probably going to piss some people off with that one. But I don't, it's one of those things where, you know, people say that, well, there is no God, but there is a devil. What? What? Or they say there, there is a God, but there is no devil. You know, just best act. Did I say that the same? <laughs> Can't have one without the other. Got to balance that shit out. But what they don't realize is there's an awful lot of gray area in between those two extremes. And guess who occupies that gray area in between those two extremes? <laughs> Us! Us. We're the ones that occupy that area. And we're the ones that have to decide which direction we wish to go. And it doesn't make a shit and bit of difference who you're going to blame on it. Ultimately, you're the final, you're the one that made the final choice. So... <clears throat> falls on you hi Rodrigo and Tim hi Tim K 
Okay. Should I put this? Yeah, I'll put this over on fake book too. What the hey? I'll have fun with this one. Crazy ass people. You know, that's that's one of those things. That's why I don't really rule out anybody. I mean, I'll listen to just about anybody for a little while at least. Until I get to the point where it's like, man, my brain is trying to crawl out my other ear. You know, the one farthest away from you because, yeah, it's going, no, run away, run away, <laughs> run away. We shouldn't be subjected to this. There are some people that I just plain, you know, after a while, I just plain can't listen to. If I have a transcript of what they said, I'll read it. Because you never know, you might find a little gem hiding in there somewhere. You never know. But uh, there's, uh, huh. now I lost my train of thought. Woo woo, left the station. Um, yeah, damn it, it's gone. Where'd it go? Dead fuss gone. I hate when that. Lisa B. Hey there, lady. How you doing, sweetheart? I love Lisa B. I went to go talk to her over the weekend. She's so wonderful. Um. Okay. I'll put it on Twitter too. Just cause. Just cause. The devil made me do it. It's not Friday yet, but I'm going to do the R thing anyway, because that's kind of a growly, isn't it? Kind of, sort of, almost. Okay. Um, I think that was really all I had in my pocket. That really sucks that I didn't have time to load my pocket up with all kinds of cool things. Which means I'm going to have to... Oh, wait. I wing it anyway. Um, over here on Farkle. Fark, Fark, Fark. Fanny Farkle, Fern Farkle, Fred Farkle. Um, right there at the top under their interesting category they have in honor of St. Patty's Day here is the World Beer Prize Index or Price Index for 2015. Let's go see what that is. I want to see what the most Kraspinski beer is. Um, wow. Okay, apparently the ranking number one is Krakow. The average price for 33 is that centiliter, centiliters, is that what that is? A beer is 62 cents at the supermarket. Um, average price at a bar is $2.70. Average overall price is $1.66. Um, I'm just going to give you the list here and then you can, you can or maybe I won't because, wow, I don't think I can pronounce a bunch of those. <laughs> Let's just say that there's people out there in the world that really, 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 they need to know about the beer prices so they can go out there and get some. I can't do beer anymore. Yes, I did, Grim. Yes, I did. I am the devil. <laughs> there's probably someone out there that's going to hear this and go, She's the devil. We're going to have to hunt her down. Really? Get past my hell dogs. Yeah. Bubba. Bubba's a sweetheart till you mess with me. And then he's not so sweet anymore. Then he can be quite, quite cantankerous. Okay. Chug a lug. that over oops oops there I have a notification on Twitter I'm so excited <laughs> oh you're welcome barman thank you <laughs> I'll put the chug -a -lug over here on world truth as well which another reminder for those of you that do not know world truth will go dark on the 23rd now I don't know if that's going to be at midnight the morning of the 23rd. I haven't gotten a, another email from the server people to let me know the exact timing of this. So, but yeah. So I will be on the radio next week, Tuesday, to do a little send-off. 
a little bon voyage to world truth because yeah it needs to it needs to go its time has come everybody's warranty runs out and world truth's warranty has run out so and so is my patience basically <laughs> But yeah, there's just entirely too many different things that need to be tended to that... Nah. Sometimes, you know, it's kind of like a house that you see that's a creepy old house. It looks really, really cool. And you think, wow, what a fixer-upper. Until you walk inside and see all the holes. And then you go, holy shit, let's just doze it and start from scratch. <laughs> That's pretty much, yeah. So, a lot of people have been going to, um, over to Freedoms Network, which is uh, Bo Diddy's site, along with Grimmy. Grimmy has been doing lots of playing on the site and fixing and adjusting and all kinds of way coolness. And uh, there is also Informed Planet that you can go to. That's another site that you can go to where the people are very serial. They're all serial killers, every damn one of them. <laughs> I have no idea what their particular brand is. And I really, quite frankly, don't care. They're killing cereal. First they drown it in milk. And then they consume it. Egad! Um, let's see. Oh, there's... There's one. I need to go there. Yeah, I didn't make that didn't make it into the pocket. <laughs> I saw one this morning and I thought, wow, that's kind of cool, but it didn't make it to the pocket. Or at least the headline was kind of cool, but it didn't make it to the pocket. While it's warming up though, I'm gonna come over here to Oopy. Oopy. Apparently, they had a little bit of an issue. In Joyzy today was that today? It's it's the top story. <laughs> Apparently, an armored truck in New Jersey dropped a bag full of money on a local highway, stopping traffic as bills were strewn about the road. It's just trying to get into the St. Patty's Day spirit, you know. It's a bag of cash, and it fell out of the Garda truck headed west on Route 46 in Wayne, New Jersey. A passing truck then struck the bag, causing the bills to fly into the air. Fly away and be free! You may as well, because that's about all you're worth, is uh, zip. Witness Paul Redman told CBS New York that the bills were spread all across the roadway as traffic came to a stop. Take a look up and see massive amounts of money flying down the highway, he said. So I walked a little further, and you can see it's just $20 bills all over the place. Just 20 Lord, I'd bend over and pick up a 20 20's a decent amount of money. Don't buy a whole hell of a lot, but still. The, uh, what? What's my name? I don't know. What is my name? Let's, okay, wait a minute. The uh, driver and several civilians attempted to scoop up the loose bills, but police said only some returned the money. It's unclear how much money was lost or how the bag fell out of the truck, but Redmond said it seemed the truck's back door flew open. Hmm. It's everywhere! I don't know, Grim. What's my name? Let me see. Oh, what's my leprechaun name? My red deck leprechaun? Okay, I am... <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, that really fits. Um, mine is Crazy Ruby Mc... <laughs> I'm Crazy Ruby McNasty. <laughs> Oh, <coughs> excuse me. That's just too funny. Too funny. Huh. How did they know? It's inquiring minds time. 
they know me so well. That's a good one, Grammy. <laughs> I think your first name is crazy as well, though. Just saying. Dude. I gotta put that one over on Facebook, because that's just too funny. <laughs> ha, a wee bit of the leprechaun. Okay. <laughs> Irish, oh wow. And then I just got Irish Spring just sprung into my mind. Wow. <laughs> that got, ooh. Oh, Grammy, you really need to clean the cobwebs out because we. <laughs> I'm just sick and wrong today, apparently. Huh. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> Yes, it is, Grim. Yes, it is. Okay, let me... I'm going to go back and look in my pocket, just in case I had something else that I hadn't gotten to. Um... What is that? What is that? Oh, that's a PDF. Okay. I'll go to that later. Um... Hmm, hmm, hmm. Did I do the Founding Fathers one on Tuesday? You know, they say the memory is the first thing to go, but I don't remember. Huh. I think I, yeah, I did. I shared, I, I didn't do it on the radio, but I shared it. Okay. Uh, close that. Go back to FARC, because I did see another one. This, and this is just weird, which it's rather fitting that it's under the weird category over on FARC. A woman's addiction causes her to eat her armchair foam. She hopes eventually to recover. But um pum pum. <laughs> Can you say corny? Worse than corny. That's farky. That's very farky. Um Come on. This is over on the dailymail.co.uk. Apparently, a mother can't stop eating her armchair. Well, it's just so yummy. You are what you eat, so apparently you're going to turn into one, Mom. This is due to a bizarre addiction that she, that makes her crave foam. And washing up sponges slathered in toppings are her favorite snack. <coughs> Yuck. Huh. Apparently, this mother of one who developed cravings for sponge during her pregnancy has spoken out about her unusual addiction to foam. Hmm. Your body is craving something, sweetheart. Wow, that's just wrong. Vicki Cullen, who is 28, not only eats the padding in her own armchair, but buys washing up sponges to snack on and likes to add foam to her recipes when cooking. Well, um, yeah. There, wow. Huh. The single um, single mother from Wakefield, South Yorkshire, assess, estimates that she has eaten her way through 2,000 sponges since she developed the obsession when she was five months pregnant with her daughter, Olivia, who is now five. Wow. You know, you could really retain water eating all of them sponges. Just saying. Dang, girlfriend. Not that that was an attractive chair to start with, but do you know what that foam is treated with, hon? Ick. Ick. Apparently she's been diagnosed with pica or pica. It's an eating disorder, which means adults ingest non-nutritive substances. And she said, it's weird to tell people I have eaten a sofa chair and to hide their foam cushions when I visit. Ooh, wow. That's just rude, eating people's furniture when you go for a visit. You're supposed to sit, not eat. Or at least not that. I've only just started revealing the extent of my cravings to friends and family because of a com uh, commitment to help make people more aware of the problem. Vicky's mainly snacks on a large armchair in her living room. What's she going to do when she gets it all gone, though? 
It's a single yellow and white colored chair and I particularly like jam or Nutella on the foam pieces. In the morning I like to dip them in orange juice. Ack! She said that um, I have tried the foam in shoulder pads and bras, but it doesn't beat the foam in my particular chair. <laughs> wow. I know it's really sad, hun, but wow. That's just odd. She uh, apparently began her cravings in May of 2011, and uh, most women experience weird food cravings, which I did when I was pregnant. Um and often well after giving birth which you know after I had my first daughter I craved burrito deluxes for the longest time pregnant woman farts are not pleasant by the way and then I started craving French toast and pancakes I don't know why but I just I had to have French toast and pancakes but after I had her I didn't want I still like the burrito deluxes and still crave them but I no longer wanted French toast at all. I couldn't even look at French toast for the longest time. And pancakes, well, I just love pancakes. So I'll just, I make up a whole bunch of pancakes and then I'll just walk around snacking on pancakes because, well, yeah, I like pancakes. I like mental pancakes too. He's a sweetie. Um, she goes on to say, my friends have told me how they crave pickles and honey or tuna and ice cream. <coughs> but not me. I've been shoving foam and sponge into my mouth for the past five years since the craving started midway through my pregnancy. I'm thinking, wow, hon, that's just really, wow. Although I'm sure it's really chewy. Wow. I have a sister-in-law, or actually she's an ex-sister-in-law now, but she, um, every morning when she was pregnant with her eldest would um, go out and get a rock oh cowboy is burpin earl mcwanker <laughs> and grimmy is crazy cooter mcrectum <laughs> rectum damn near killed him <laughs> oh that's just too funny Okay, uh, in any case, my, my ex-sister-in-law, she used to chew on a rock. She would go out in the driveway and she would, she would look, at, she had to find a specific rock every morning. And she would just, she'd just have it in her mouth all day long. Just kind of wallowing around in her mouth. Never broke a tooth, any of that fun stuff. And then, you know, by the end of the day, she would swallow the rock. Wow, talk about having guys think kidney stones are bad but um and she never had a problem with you know passing them or any of that fun stuff but every day she would go out to the driveway and get another rock she's weird she's really weird uh bless her heart she's still odd i love her though um i just <laughs> grammy i absolutely love your name <laughs> Just love it. Okay. Kate, um, Kate shared this. I gotta see this. What is that? It's about Trumple Stillskin and the Simpsons. Which I do remember seeing that, that Simpsons episode. I didn't really watch much of that, but I do remember seeing that one. Oh, it's the little video that predicts Trump would be the president in 2000, which, huh. Well. Yeah, they are off just a skosh, but. I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is going to be a scary deal. Scary, scary deal. Okay, let me share the over on World Truth real fast. Because I don't want to. What was that? Caddy scat brat. Iceland and now Ireland have taken action to hold criminal bankers accountable for their direct role in the economic devastation which enveloped most of the world beginning in 2008. Yay! Yay! Hi, Bobby! 
I had to click on this one. I'm going to have to go there after I do the Simpson and share the... Thanks, Caddy. That's cool. Okay, get this. I am going to miss my little emoticons. <laughs> I really am going to miss those things. But I'll get over it. Yes, I will. Okay. And let me go find the Simpsons again. I know everybody has seen the video. They've It's been shared umpteen gazillion times on Facebook and on World Truth. And, but I'm going to go ahead and share this article anyway because thank you ever so much, Miss Kate. I want to get to this Ireland thing so I can say, Booyah! Way to go! Uh, crappy. I don't want to open up that link too because it'll slow down my putter. But, okay. <clears throat> this is from the activistpost.com from today of all times. Ireland to prosecute top banker who destroyed their economy and guess where he was hiding? Um, I don't know. Ah, ha, ha. Apparently a former head of a major Irish bank has been extradited from USA and brought before Dublin District Court to face several charges stemming from the bank's role in the 2008 financial crisis. David Drum, former chief executive of Irish Anglo Bank from 2005 until 2008, had been arrested in Boston in October of 2015 and originally attempted to fight extradition, but he recently withdrew the objection and was returned to Ireland early Monday. Yay. Face up to it, dude. That's the best way to handle that shit. He faces 33 charges in Ireland, which echoes Ireland's unprecedented move to hold its bankers, or no, excuse me, echoes Iceland's. Wow. Um, and hold them criminally accountable for their role in that country's economic meltdown. Though Drum predictably denied wrongdoing, yeah, right. His charges include fraud, forgery, misleading management reporting, um, unlawful lending, falsifying documents, and false accounting linked to financial transactions prior to the collapse of Anglo. This is according to the Irish Times. Though prosecutors consider Drum a flight risk, after all, he seemed to be seeking safe haven inside the United States, the court allowed the ex-banker to post bail under several conditions. Drum's passport is currently being held by the um, Gardia or Gardai. Is that how? I, Catherine's going to have to tell me how to pronounce that. And under the bail arran arrangement, he assured the court he would not apply for another and does not possess a U.S. passport. Wink, 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 fingers crossed, arms crossed, toes crossed, legs crossed. Honest, I won't do that. Apparently seven of Drum's relatives offered to put their houses on the line as security for his bail, though the judge only required four names. As RT reported, Drum is alleged to have participated in transactions totaling around seven billion pounds or is that Euro? That's Euro, I think. Between Anglo and the Second Lending Institution, uh, Irish Life and Permanent. Um, Anglo posted the worst corporate results in Irish history with losses of 17.5 billion with a B in 2010. Wow. Drum came to the United States in 2009 and reportedly refused to cooperate with an investigation. Prosecutors fear his capacity to marshal significant sums of money adds to the possibility that Drum could only or could easily disappear. 
Um, however, his solicitor argued that in order to better prepare his defense, including sorting through the millions of documents and nearly 400, wow, hours of phone conversations, Drum needed to remain out of prison. As the Times noted, two books of evidence will need to be heard by the court, one of which entails bringing 120 witnesses to testify. The former banking executive has not yet entered a formal plea, and he faces a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison if found guilty. Wow, that's all? Iceland and now Ireland. It starts with the eyes. Uh-huh. And that's where the soul is. Behind the... Or you can see it through the eyes. Different eye, but hey. I... Um... Iceland and Ireland have taken action to hold criminal bankers accountable for their direct role in the economic devastation, which enveloped most of the world beginning in 2008. The exact opposite of what the U.S. does, because, well, they're too big to fail. So all of you little guys that it's easy for you to fail and you can just go on the streets because then we'll make laws that makes it illegal for you to be on the streets and then we'll throw you in jail and then we'll make you work for slave labor and then uh, on and on and on and on. As of October, Iceland's criminal bankers have been sentenced to a combined 74 years in prison with others still awaiting trial. Then... The sale of one of its national banks meant a payout, albeit small, for every Icelandic citizen. The U.S. notoriously and controversially bailed out its banks because, you know, they should not be held accountable for their stupidity and their greed. Essentially, they rewarded them. Who says crime doesn't pay? Or at least excuse them for the crisis they created. Drum was ordered by the judge to remain in Ireland, as if he's going to listen to that. Notably, according to RT, the Irish ex-banker has appealed a U.S. court's refusal to grant him bankruptcy on over 10 million euro of debt. Hun, what do you do with all that money? Hmm? Interesting. Very interesting. They are everywhere, people. And, you know, that that's why they keep doing this shit, because people keep letting them get away with it. As soon as you make them pay for their own mistakes, even if, <clears throat> you know, it's just taking every single thing they own and selling it, and they don't get any of it. And I mean even the clothes they're wearing. You know, if they want to wear something, they can wear an ever-so-fashionable glow-in-the-dark orange jumper or pink jumper and you know since they won't have a home anymore because that too got sold to pay off all of the bills um, they can have an extended stay at the Gray Bar Hilton sure that's also on the taxpayers dime but the taxpayer feels just a wee bit better about it and not at those um, fancy schmancy Club Med or Club Fed Gray Bar Hilton's. Not the ones that where you can have your little masseuse and the tennis court and all that other fun stuff. No. <laughs> they get to stay at one with three hots and a cot. And be lucky if they get three hots. I think they should only get two. Breakfast and supper. The lunch can be a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Nothing wrong with that. Learn how the other half lives, darling. Huh. Thank you once again, Miss Caddy Scatbrat. That was an excellent article. Excellent news, too. Um. Uh oh. I got comments over here on World Truth. I got lots of comments. Let's see. 
Okay. Pam's at a loss for words, which, yeah, I, I get that. <laughs> Bobby's just glad he's not married to her because he couldn't afford to keep her in furniture. <laughs> oh, and Kid Lord says the more milk she drinks, the heavier, tummy, the heavier her tummy feels. Well, that's true, too. I wonder if when she has to pee, she just has to push on her belly and that'll just shoot it out. Ugh, I cannot imagine wanting to eat foam. Ugh. Very strange. Very strange. Okay. Let's put this one over on Facebook, too. Good job, Ireland. And I'll put that on Twitter, too. Just because. Because I got like 180 tweets. I'm, I'm slipping. Uh, <laughs> Bravo. And I have a notification, too. Wow. Who's that? Oh. Okay. Now. Where's my oopie? There's oopie. I'm going to go back to oopie. Just because. Oh, my God. Zena finally came out of the closet, guys. Sorry. Yep. You're SOL. Just shit off to the side. Okay. Favorite state in the whole wide world. Oh, uh, wow. Hey, that is kind of cool, though. Okay. From Upi, UPI, com. A Florida woman fights to keep potty trained pet alligator. Now the picture is worth a bazillion words because it's just too cool. Seriously, I got to share this so y'all can see it. It's like, damn, that's one badass gator. <laughs> what is that, Miss Kate? Oh, a Ron Paul. I, I don't know why a lot of the Ron Paul supporters are going to um, to Bernie Sanders. That just doesn't make sense to me. Oh, well. In any case, back to this story. In Lakeland, Florida, a woman is fighting to keep her beloved pet alligator. She said, and she said, 15-year-old Rambo has never been a normal gator. He's also quite small for a gator, I would think. Huh. Hello, Patty Joe. Let me, let me get this here real fast, and then I can read that. Ah, shh. Stutter figures. Oh, someone just asked. So, since you're closing down WT, I will build, bid my farewell and find other links you shared. May God bless. May God bless you and keep and your angels keep you safe. Much love and light always. Namaste. Thank you, Anon, for life. Bless your heart. That's awfully sweet of you. Okay. Uh, wait. I gotta find one more real fast. Okay. There. Oh, cool picture. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm easily distracted, don't you know? Okay. Back to the lovely lady with the 15-year-old Rambo. Mary Thorne of Lakeland said that Rambo, the only survivor of five alligators she adopted after they were found being kept in cramped and dark conditions 11 years ago, is house-trained, 
understands sign language commands, and loves to dress in costumes, which she said she also um, also serve in pract a practical purpose because the pet is sensitive to light. Oh, poor baby. Thorne said she obtained a license to keep Rambo as a pet in 2012, but the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission is now trying to seize her pet because he has grown past six feet long. Ah, okay, so that's an old pick. Um, and that's the maximum size allowed for anyone living on less than 2.5 acres. Picky, picky, picky. Thorne said she is asking the commission to make an exception for Rambo due to his unusual nature and because she obtained her license before the 2.5 acre provision was added onto the law. Well, unless it was retroactive, I don't see why that should apply to her. I think that should apply from the time it was signed forward. Unless you made it retroactive, people. Of course, you know, it's once again squiggles and lines on a piece of paper. She goes on to say, he's like my son. He's my family. He's not a normal gator, and he has never been a normal gator. She said Rambo is trained to keep his mouth shut around people and does not pose any danger to humans or animals. He loves kids, especially with barbecue sauce. And when kids come around, he shuts his mouth really tight so fingers can't get in his mouth. Well, that is really well trained. He's also fond of dogs. So is Dangleberry. And he watches TV on top of my dogs. People get along with him. Kids love him. Brand new babies have sat with him to do pictures. The FWC spokesman, Gary Morse, said officials are looking into Thorne's case and no final decision has been made about whether Rambo will be allowed to stay. Thorne said she's worried about what might happen to Rambo at an alligator sanctuary, which, yeah, I mean, 15 years in this kind of an environment, you would be signing his death warrant, I think. She says that they'll treat him like a normal gator, and he'll be dead in weeks, which I agree. I think that's what would happen. If he gets put in a tent with other gators, they'll eat him. His immune system is low, and other gators will also will get sick um, after he passes on whatever he gets, or after they consume him. However, Oh, other gators will go after sick gators. Okay. It is kind of cute. That's a video at the bottom, too. Uh, you know, people have some really unusual pets. But it is kind of a cool... Kind of a cool... Little article there. Okay, let me see. Wow, Kate. Holy moly. I got to check that out. Please tell me it's in English. <laughs> I wouldn't be. It's not. Damn it. Kate just shared a link over in the RLM. Um, just a minute. Let me yeah, close out. Apparently, the uh, Brazil had a vote of 433 to 1 to impeach Dilma. Yeah. Now, the only problem is um, impeachment, unless it has a little bit more weight to it than it does here in USA, it's not going to mean doodly squat because technically Slick Willie was impeached. And what that do to him? And look at all the crap Shrillery has done. They haven't even dieted her sorry ass yet. And they're probably not going to until after the election. And then, you know, depending on who wins. I mean, if she wins, she'll pardon herself. Although they'll probably say something like, um, 
Well, you know, it's in the Constitution that you cannot arrest them while they are in performance of their duties. Well, a lot of the shit that she was doing was not in the performance of her duties as a POTUS. So, um, wow. They're always going to take those rules and twist and contort. Always. Because that's what they do. The rules only apply to you. They don't apply to them. They can break those rules all they want to. They can sink to the lowest depths possible. Why? Because they're the rule makers and breakers. And when you make the rules, you can break the rules. But if you don't make the rules, you can't break the rules. Or you get punished. Okay. Let's see. What else do I have here? Snoopy, snoopy, snoopy. I'm going to go back to Fark. Um... Oh, wow. Oh, this, this is not cool. Or maybe it is. Um, it's under the cool category. The very first Honda built for America is unsurprisingly in better shape than your 2011 Chevy Malibu. Which, uh, yeah, there's a lot of recalls out there right now. Just saying. Tim Mings is maybe the only mechanic on earth who wrenches exclusively on Honda N600s and Z600s. The plucky mini-esque ultra-compact cars that were built in the late 1960s and early 70s. As he started his latest restoration project, he wiped some grease off the VIN stamp and realized, holy crap, he got the first one. Wow, that would be so cool. Uh, Mings, a.k.a. Merciless Mings, operates a shop in Southern California and subsists entirely off fixing people's N600s and Z600s. It's a 20-year veteran mechanic, and he says he's been a Honda guy his whole life. Apparently, he has a regular rotation of 200... Um, 200 some odd clients with these cars but his particular serial one project is going to be something truly special it is literally the first production honda in the united states and without a doubt a thing of beauty as it sits but mings will be making it even nicer and eventually sending the car off to a honda museum where it will be preserved indefinitely Mings will be documenting the whole restoration process for you to keep up with, and um, yeah, I'm going to. Just watching the introductory clip above apparently has the writer tingling. Ooh, Chris the Tingler? Oh, I do. Apparently not only because it... Um, this individual is a bit of a vintage Honda fanboy himself, but Ming's passion is plain to see even through the camera. Couldn't be happier that this car is in the hands of someone who knows how to treat it. Maybe he'll invite us over if he reads this, which that would be kind of cool. And it is a cute little car. I do recall seeing some of those going down the highway when I was younger. Back in my younger days before I could drive. Hello there, RLM 8047. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. I will go ahead and put this over on World Truth. That is just pretty cool. Yay for you, Mr. Mings. Okay. Um, we'll put that... Oh, shit. And I closed Twitter instead of... <laughs> I hate buttons. I always push the wrong one. Damn it all. 
Oh, sweet. I just op reopened my Twitter and wow, that is cool. I wouldn't do it to my hair, but that is pretty cool. See, now I got to go there because I just got to. Classic paintings might be what you look for in your next hair color. Wow. That is kind of, I mean, it's a, huh. I'm almost tempted. I want to know what kind of crap they use in the hair dye, though, because I don't want to put a bunch of icky stuff. And I want it to be able to gradually rinse out. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that would be fun to do okay I'll have to share that with my daughter too because she would do some of this stuff because she's crazy like that I don't know where she gets it from oh shit oh sh shit from Shinola <laughs> I did the wrong thing see me and my buttons okay um no, not that one. Where is it? Where'd it go? Where, oh, where are you tonight? There it is. This is what I wanted to share on Twitter, and I had a thudder finger about the Honda. Okay. Now. Oh, hey, I refreshed, and there's a picture of the United States there, and it's all red, and it says, Washington, we gave you your chance, and you're not part of the United States anyway, so you're not the boss of me, not the boss, Applesauce, which I never did get to finish listening to that video, cowboy. <laughs> Go figure. It's just been, it's like, damn it actually expected to work at work it just sucks okay <laughs> I am going to go back to Yuppie um, oh lord okay this is just stupid but yeah over on UP, apparently an Iowa waitness, waitress was stiffed on a tip for not being normal looking. What is normal looking? I'd much rather be normal looking myself. Apparently in Des Moines, Iowa, a server of an Iowa restaurant uh, felt like she was back in middle school when a stingy customer left a note reading, tips are only for normal looking people. I thought a tip was supposed to be for your appreciation of going above and beyond an exceptional service. That's why I tip people. Or even just smiling and being pleasant. Taylor Beak is a popular uh, waitress at the Zombie Burger in Des Moines and said that she collected the completed bill from a customer Tuesday night and discovered the patron has crossed out the tip line on the 1726 tab and wrote, tips are only for normal looking people. She was quite shocked by the note, which, uh, yeah, I would, ah, uh, that would get the instant snark out of me. Just saying. At first, I felt really upset. I felt attacked. I almost felt like I was back in middle school all over again, like being bullied. I felt like a burning anger inside of me, which I would have, yeah, you know, you had that initial, no, you can't have a tip. Those are for normal people. So call me Abby and tip me anyway if I gave you good service, asshat. Oh, wait, never mind. I don't want your money. She goes on to say, but I didn't act on it because it's not worth it when someone puts hate out there. You know to respond in a hateful way will do no good. Zombie Burger parent company Orchestrate Hospitality released a statement in support of the worker. We believe that Zombie Burger is a place that celebrates individuality. We stand by our staff, 
We also believe that our customers enjoy Zombie Burger because it is a wonderfully unique place and that includes the team members. We are in 100% support of our staff and we're confident that our customers will be as well. She is an example of a great team member and we are standing by her. Well, there you go. Beck says she does not plan to alter her personal style to suit customers like the stingy tipper, which, you know, that was just being an ass munch and a tightwad all at once. Obviously, you are so tight that your ass is watertight. Obviously. It's not the way that I can express myself artistically, and it's really important for me that I... I'm allowed to do that and it's okay if people don't understand it because it's just who I am. Beek said that she has um, a message for the offended customer. I will tell them not to judge someone based on what they look like. Bravo. And I mean, I may look like a weirdo, but I'm actually a very nice, decent person. I like her hair. I actually know several people that have hair like that. My youngest had her hair like that for a while. The server said that she had been overwhelmed with support from customers and members of the public. It's truly incredible how something so negative can turn into something so positive. Yes, it is. If you don't follow down that negative path, you can. Just because someone else is being ugly, and I'll, I'll be ugly for you, hun. It's okay. I'll call him a tightwad. Oh, it translates. Okay. Oh, thank you, Miss Kate. Do I have time? I will go see. Kate said that this one is pre-voting, but we'll just go there anyway. It's all fucked. That F-bomb. Damn. I don't think I dropped one before now, did I? Holy moly. Is this like a record? <laughs> I think it is. Brazil descends into chaos as... Rousseff and Lula wiretaps trigger mass protests. I've been seeing lots and lots on the news about all those protests, too. Just yesterday, we said the following about Brazil. It seems as though this country can't get through a single day without some piece of political news or economic data creating confusion and turmoil. We said that on the way to noting that uh, Central Bank Chief Alexandre... Tambini, um, I know I butchered that, but sorry, sweetie. He, uh, he looked set to resign for fear that former President Lula's new cabinet position and attendant promise to turn the economy around would lead invariably to government interference in monetary and FX policy. There's no such thing as government, so don't let that fiction interfere. And you behave like a human being instead of a grubby asshat banker. I'm not saying all bankers are bad. I know a few of them that are quite nice people. As regular readers and Brazil watchers alike, excuse me, are no doubt aware, the BRL has been a veritable roller coaster ride of late, and it's all thanks to, in one way or another, to Lula. The currency rallied on his arrest, sold off when he was offered a position in the cabinet, and now is headed sharply higher after a court injunction blocked his nomination as chief of staff. Now, see, why in the hell don't we do this shit? Oh, yeah, that's right, we're USA. Because they're too big to fail. I'm going to go ahead and share this one, Miss Kate, over in the RLM. Thank you, darling. That's an awful lot of gobbledygook stuff that I really... Um, I really don't pay a lot of attention to that kind of stuff. And I know I probably should. I have all these people tell me, you should do this and you should do that. And it's like, really? I have enough trouble taking care of me. Okay? let alone keeping track of you. Um, uh, 
this to a sec here. Oops. Oops. Clicked on the wrong thing. <laughs> oh, Dilma the dildo, huh? Alrighty. Cool. Let's see. Uh, Q E T. There. I had to spell it right. Okay. Now I need to, because I, I spazzed off doing the tippy thing, because I got so excited, and I didn't share that over on World Truth. I do think that was extremely petty and childish and just plain skin flinty-ish of that customer. But you know what? When you work with the general public, you got to deal with that sometimes. And it really is best to take the high road. And trust me, I've had to deal with people like that. And yes, you take the high road. And then after they have left, you go in back and you do your... <laughs> oh, well. Let's see, what do I want to do? There. There. I'll be not so nice. But that's for you, sweetheart, because he was, whomever that was, was an asshat. Okay. I got 20 minutes left. What can I do? Grimmy told me earlier that I'm very good at talking about nothing. Well, what is nothing? Actually, what is nothing? How can you have nothing? Because if you have a void, it's a void. It's not nothing. So how can, what is nothing? I want to know. I want to know. But until then, over here on FARC, under their interesting category, they have the extra crispy life of Colonel Harlan Sanders. What? Was he cremated? Please don't tell me that he was part of those 11 herbs and spices. Ew. Okay. Oh, it looks like just a little biography, and I really don't want to go there. I'll share it, but I'm not going to read it. Not, not online, at least. Um, or not live. Uh-oh, crude broke $40. So is, does that mean it's going down? Because gas out here has been going up steadily. Like a minimum of 10 cents. Yeah, it's going up. Damn. You know, the, the amount that it's going up really does not, it's not justified by the price that crude is at right now. in my opinion but you know and I do know a little bit about the oil patch since the X is still in the oil patch and I do know quite a few people that uh, still work in the patch oops I don't have a light on so I have a hard time seeing my keyboard Seeing by the light of my screen. Hey, move it closer, Grandma. You can see better. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to put this over on Facebook, too. Um, oh. <laughs> Catherine just messaged me. Actually, she messaged me a bit. Well, yeah, it's been a little bit ago. Um, <laughs> that uh, she's laughing her ass off at the way I'm pronouncing shit. <laughs> yes, Catherine. Um, thanks, Grammy. Grammy said it means it's on the rise, which <sighs> the prices at the pump cannot be justified by the cost per barrel right now. They just can't. Somebody's making money somewhere. 
Um, uh, well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Catherine. I, this, yeah, this is just, <laughs> this is normal for me. <laughs> oh, and I'm glad you guys are having a wonderful evening. Tequila shots? No, it do. Um, ah. Yeah, that's pretty much, yeah. I don't do tequila shots, so cowboy, because tequila makes my clothes fall off. <laughs> and I haven't done tequila in a long time. Whew. That's just bad for you. Very bad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, let's see, where was I at besides lost? Somewhere. I'm lost. Oh, I know. I was going to... <laughs> the memory is the first thing that goes, don't you know? Um. <laughs> okay. I'm going to... I got to share the stingy. The stingy guy. Mr. Stingy Guy. That's what I'm going to call him. butt munch. There's lots of other things I call him, but Mr. Stingy Guy works for now. Okay, I'm going to go back to the home page on Oopy. And I probably should, oh, hey, hey, Epiphany, Acme light bulb moment. Too bad it doesn't light up my keyboard. Oh, a baby wombat on an Australian beach. Down under. Hey, Mary B, how's things down under? Is it starting to cool off down in your neck of the woods, sweetheart? Or are you getting close to the end of your summertime? Because I'm getting close to spring. It's sprung all over the place. Um, pig. Yeah, I wanted to go to the pig. Because I want to see what's in there. This date in history. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hambo's going nuts. The silencers continue their assault on freedom of speech. Oh, looks like Hambo's got a hell of a humdinger going here. Y'all ought to come over to the pig and check it out. Uh, oh, and the word of the... T that too. The word of the day is privilege. An accusatory term provoked or invoked by envious whiners who feel... feel a bit. How about I stop, rewind, and try that again? Because obviously my brain and my mouth are not on speaking terms right now. <laughs> I'm going to try this over. <laughs> Privilege. An accusatory term invoked by envious whiners who feel irrationally inferior when confronted by certain immutable traits such as right-handedness. What? What? I don't feel inferior about right-handedness because God knows left-handed people are in the right frame of mind. Just saying. <laughs> um, oh. Ooh, he's also got a bite me dickhead thing here. Ooh, wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. No one hambo. Whoo, that'll be a humdinger too. Uh, this date in history. March 17th, uh, 1755. Transylvania Land Co. buys Kentucky for $50,000. Unexpectedly, the fine print requires them to marry their own sisters. Wow, who to thunk? Well, you know, keeping it all in the family that way. Uh, this date in history, March the 17th, 1762. Six years after St. Patrick's Day is first celebrated in New York City. Really? Cool. Um, at the Crown and Thistle Tavern, the Big Apple perpetrates its first St. Patrick's Day parade. Wow, it's, dang, that's longer than then uh, Thanksgiving Day and Mother's Day and and it's a holiday I'd much rather celebrate although I'm not going to drink green beer ew 
Okay, this date in history, 1898. First practical submarine submerges for one hour, 45 minutes. The real fun ensues when it initiates a bold new, new maneuver called resurfacing. Much to the delight of the crew, <laughs> it wiped. This date in history, 1942, General Douglas MacArthur relocates Pacific War front lines to Australia. Says he's going, he's got Tojo right where he wants him. That's Toe Jam, hun, and you should wash your feet better because, you know, everyone knows, take care of your feet, change your socks. This date in history, 1955, Gary Sinise, actor and proudly patriotic American, born, or proves that there's still hope for Tinseltown. I do like Gary Sinise. I think he's an excellent actor and a pretty darn awesome musician as well. Also, this date in history, 1988, Iran says Iraq using poison gas. Uncle Sam pretends to be shocked, is heard muttering, tell someone who cares, jihad breath. Although I'm thinking poison gas, okay, who fixed the camel meat? Probably those 11 herbs and spices you stole from the colonel. This date in history, 1990, in the fabled City of Angels, unto Porcus O. Publisher, a son, Daniel Patrick O. Publisher, is born. Happy birthday, Dodgeball, and yes, happy birthday, Daniel Patrick. And congrats, Porcuso Publisher, on being a proud daddy. I'm going to go ahead and share the pig, because, you know, you never know. You might not know that, hey, oh, shit. Never mind. Yes, Miss Catherine? Oh, you're listening to... <laughs> oh, you guys, you're gluttons for punishment. That's what it is, dear Catherine, but I love you, darling. I truly do. Oh, you and that wonderful man of yours and your beautiful daughters that they take after their mother. You know, I once had someone tell me, oh, your daughters get their, look from, their looks from their mother. And I said, yeah, I wondered where they went. <laughs> Damn it all. So that's why I look like this. My girls took it all. Shit. <laughs> oh, well. Gotta play. Gotta play. Never take yourself so seriously. Because you know what? None of us get out of it alive. So, enjoy. Enjoy. Um, Romes, you got sucked into that horror reality. Ah, which horror reality was that, hun? Hmm. Oh, Sinise was good as Stu Redman in the TV series of The Stand. Ah. <laughs> Isn't it funny how you do that, Grimmy? You know, like every time I see Piers Brosnan, I, th I think of Remington Steele. I don't care if he was an extremely attractive James Bond. I still think of Remington Steele every time I see him. Um... Yeah, there's, see, that's the funny thing about memory. They say that's the first thing to go, but I remember a lot of those little trivial things that nobody really gives a shit about, but I do, because obviously I do, because those are the things that pop up in my brain. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, who's watching Dancing with the Stars? Yuck. Yuck. I don't watch any of that stuff. You know, unless it's on the boob tube when I'm at bowling. And there's no sound to it. So we just, we watch a lot of that stuff and just laugh. Because it really is quite entertaining when there's no sound to it. You can make up your own words to it, especially when you're watching their lips move. You know, it's like bad lip reading, those videos on YouTube. Oh, we have a grand old time with that. I know that shocks you. There. I had to share the pig. Y'all got to check out the pig. Hambo looks like he's on a on a hell of a rip snorter. Okay, do I have time for one more farkle? Fanny farkle? Bird farkle? 
Um. Oh, hey. Apparently, this is under the asinine category. Well, it's perfect for me then, ain't it? Uh, don't look now, but FARC may be inviting trolls by posting this article. What is your definition of a troll? You know, one man's troll is another man's truth talker. I I know a lot of people that I think they look quite trollish, and a lot of the things that they do are quite trollish, and yet others go, no, they're wonderful. And I think, okay, to each his own. But, you know, that's part of that lovely First Amendment thing that I think is a global application. It's not just the United States. It is a global application. You have the right to free speech. You have the right. It is a natural right. Simply because you are existing right now, you have the right to express your opinion. And it doesn't make a darn bit of difference who gets butt hurt over it. You also have the right to get butt hurt when someone else expresses their opinion and you don't agree with it and you know what that's the lovely thing about free speech and the hardest thing about free speech is standing up for the speech that you find abhorrent not necessarily agreeing with it but the person that says it you stand by them and they and say hey they have every right to say what they're saying and they also have every right to deal with the repercussions of what just fell out of their pie hole that's the hardest part and the most important part about free speech and it is a global thing we need to get that down that's one of the ways that we will actually start straightening out this mess that we're in okay now to bloomberg.com this is written by Kristan Felber. Kristan. Oh no, the photography is by Kristan Felber. Dunn Lawrence is the one that wrote it. So, okay, I saw the photo first. Me in the bloody wash of red with racist pulsing over my face. A couple of clicks brought me to this. In the darkest shadow of Bloomberg's glossy office building in Manhattan, you may find a woman by the name of Dunn Lawrence, a journalist who has built a career on writing salacious articles about China. Wow. I bet I'd have fun trying to read that shit. <laughs> that was my introduction to The Blot. It's a website I hope you've never heard of. The article went on and on. I'd been kicked out of China for poor job performance and eked out a living on minimum wage. My appearance was ravaged by years of consuming hormone-packed fried chicken and stressing over money. Now I'd found a way to save my sinking career by writing negative articles about China and taking kickbacks from short sellers. Wow. In a cinematic scene set at Kentucky Fried Chicken, this inter internet version of me laid out a strategy. Bashing the Chinese could be a profitable niche for me, Lawrence said to a source while biting off a juicy chicken leg quarter at KFC. The Chinese don't vote. The Chinese don't sue people. They just sit there taking the shit. How much better can it get? I'm making a living out of it. Cha-ching! <laughs> really? It was difficult for me to keep reading. In addition to all the lies, the story was laced with creepy sexual imagery. Ew. I'd had my panties ripped off. I was like a dog wagging her tail trying to attract a mating partner. Wow. They do play dirty pool, don't they? I felt overwhelmed. It was as if something heavy was pressing on into my forehead, and I wanted to fight back, and I also wanted to hide. I hadn't been able to do either. The story, published on January the 8th, 2014, had the byline, John Sterling. The site's other article, uh, articles were an odd mix of celebrity gossip, entertainment news, and stabs at reporting on serious topics such as drug marketing. It wasn't exactly high journalism, but it looked professional. 
not like some amateur blog. Google seemed to think so as well because the story instantly went to the top of the results when I searched my name. Yay! I'm thinking they probably paid for that. SEM stuff, you know. In September 2015, the FBI arrested the man behind the blot, one Benjamin Huey, not for smearing me or the other people he imagined were his enemies. He's primarily a financier and he was charged with securities fraud and other financial crimes involving Chinese companies he helped to list on U.S. stock markets. Now see, this is exactly what happens, people. They do all kinds of vile, disgusting, evil stuff, and in order to keep you from seeing all of the nastiness that they're doing, they start slinging arrows at everyone else and slinging mud and slinging shit and slinging whatever they can sling oh look at that bad person over there pay no attention to what i'm doing sounds kind of familiar doesn't it apparently the u.s department of justice alleges way pocketed tens of millions of dollars in illicit profits that he funneled through associates overseas and back into accounts in the u.s Way denies the charges. No! Apparently a trial date is set for March of 2017. If the world is still here. This tends to go on for quite a way. But I am out of time. So I'm just going to go ahead and share this link with y'all. I hope everybody has an absolutely awesome rest of your shit day. I mean Thursday because I sure am happy it's Thursday because that means tomorrow's Friday. And I'm taking off work at noon so I can haul ass down to see my grandbabies. And then Saturday, I am going to be, uh, yeah, bachelorette partying with the youngest. This could prove interesting. Going to a comedy club. Should I heckle the guy or should I just sit back and be nice? Ha! Huh. Stay tuned. I'll let you know next week, Tuesday, when I am back with my regular or with an extra rocket chair tomorrow evening be sure to come around it's going to be balls to the wall tomorrow at noon central time which is seven o'clock denmark time will be this is no time for rational thinking with vince and lou and god knows who they're going to have i'm sure it's going to be absolutely entertaining and informative saturday i'm running over saturday is kira but you know what i still own the place uh <laughs> I'm such a smart ass. Saturday is Kira with the bridge. That's at 4 o'clock Eastern Time here on World Truth Radio. Saturday evening will be Bo Diddy with some bodacious tunage. Sunday at noon, which I will not be able to hear because I will be on the road, will be Grimner with his blues show that leads into Hal Anthony at 2 o'clock. Um, or is that 3 Eastern? 2 o'clock by time. 3 Eastern Time. So, lots of stuff going on this weekend. Please be sure to 